When a timeline is first created in DaVinci Resolve, the default view option is presented right away. However, this may not be ideal for you depending on what you're trying to do or your editing style. But the good news is that we can change this very easily in DaVinci Resolve. And in this video, we're going to look at all the options we have for our video view, timeline view, and audio view. For video view options, we have essentially three different choices. We have the plain view, we have the thumbnail view, and we also have the film strip view. Now the system defaults to the plain view, which is what we're looking at right here, where uh, the video track and audio track are presented in a thin strip. And while it doesn't take up a lot of real estate, it can be really good for speed editing. At the same time, we lose visibility as to what is happening in each video. And now that brings us to the next view option, thumbnail view. And in thumbnail view, you will notice right off the bat that the visibility issue we had with a plain view uh, option is no longer the case. We have much improved visibility as to what is happening uh, in each video clip. And in particular, on the video track, we are now presented in each video clip uh, a thumbnail picture of the frame at the beginning and end of each clip. Now, lastly, we have film strip view. Now, film strip view are very much like thumbnail view, but the only difference here is that we are uh, presented instead with every single frame in the video. So really, this is the maximum visibility uh, that we can get. And this is really good for detail editing because you're in the know at all the time as to what is happening in the video clip. Now for timeline view options, the three choices we have are subtitle track, which is turned on by default. We also have stack timelines option, and we also have audio waveform option. Now, subtitle tracks is turned on by default. And what that means is that uh, if uh, we go ahead and bring in, let's say, a subtitle, a subtitle track from effects library, uh, now you will be able to see the track. But if we go ahead and right now and turn this off, then you will no longer be able to see the track. The track will be hidden from us. However, the subtitle itself is still there. It's just that the track is invisible. So if the goal is to remove the subtitle, now what you have to do is turn it back on and delete the track itself. That will permanently remove the subtitle uh, from the timeline. In stack timeline view option, we now have the ability to bring in a new timeline or to create a new timeline. So if we go ahead and click on the plus sign, and we can now create a brand new timeline right here very easily. And once it's created, we can switch back and forth between the timelines by simply clicking on the tabs on the top there. Now let's pretend we already have that timeline. If we go ahead and click on the plus sign, we can bring up the drop-down menu and choose the timeline that we want to bring in. So now you can once again switch back and forth between the two. We can also stack the timeline by clicking the Add Timeline button right there. What that will do is that it, it will now allow us to bring an additional timeline there. And this way we can now view two timelines at the same time. And we can edit two timelines at the same time as well. Now lastly, uh, Audio Waveform is going to allow us to see what is happening uh, on the audio track much better. It really provides us great visibility as to how the sound is behaving throughout the video clip. Okay, before I move any further, let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit so that we can really focus on the audio track. Now, as we we're saying earlier about the audio waveforms, when we turn that on, we are also activating the three audio view options down below. We have non-rectified waveform, we have full waveform, and we also have waveform border option. Now, uh, if we click on the non-rectified waveform, which you will notice that the waveform itself is now sitting in the center instead of uh, sitting from bottom up. Also, the waveform is kind of mirroring itself. Now, the next option is full waveform. Now, when we turn on full waveform, uh, what you will notice is that it looks very much like the default, which is uh, you know, sitting from the bottom up, 
but uh, now it's actually using the entire track to do that. So it's providing a much enhanced view. Lastly, we have a waveform border option. What that does is essentially to add a black border around the waveform. The idea is that that will make it much easier for us to see. Uh, from my personal experience, the difference is not as substantial. Nonetheless, it is an option there for us to use. All right, a couple more things I want to quickly bring up before we wrap up the video. The first of which is that in the plain video view option, pretty much all audio view options are now deactivated. So as you can see, no matter which one I try to click, uh, it won't make any difference because in the plain view uh, option, it's all about minimizing the space. Also, under all of the video view options, uh, they are mutually exclusive. So if I turn on film strip view, then I cannot turn on the other view. So you can only turn on one view at a time. However, on all the other options are not like this. Uh, under timeline view options, you can turn on stack timeline uh, and subtitle track and audio waveforms all at the same time. They won't conflict with each other. Same with audio view options. You can turn on non-rectified, full waveform, and uh, audio waveform border uh, all at the same time. Okay, that's just something I want to quickly bring up, guys. Uh, I hope this helps, and I will see you in the next video.